Hey guys, so today is going to be a pregnancy vlog, finally. I am 38 weeks and 3 days. I'm actually delivering tomorrow. And I don't know if this is going to be up before I deliver or not. <laughs> but here we are. We're going to film it anyway because I do want to talk to you guys and update you on everything that has happened since I filmed my last pregnancy vlog, which I believe was about 3 weeks ago. I think I was like 35 weeks and some days. I'm pretty sure. So a lot has happened since then. Let's dive right in. So if you follow my vlog channel religiously and follow my daily vlogs, then you probably have heard a lot of this already. So I apologize, but, or maybe not, maybe there'll be some new information in here, but I still do not know the gender. I've mentioned that to you guys before. But well, first off, let me start by saying I'm Melissa. <laughs> I live in Texas. I'm 29 years old. This is my second pregnancy, third child. Our oldest, Emily, is adopted. So this is my second time carrying a baby and it is a complete surprise to me. I have zero idea what it is. My husband, however, does know the gender uh, by choice. He wanted to find out. He didn't think he could wait. So he found out. I did not find out. And we're delivering tomorrow. I will be a repeat C-section times two. And um, I'm scheduled for 0700 on September 1st, which is crazy. So I have had three appointments since the last time I updated you guys. My last pregnancy vlog, I talked about, actually I don't know if I talked about this or not. I'd have to go back and look. I may have talked about, I felt like the baby was breech. Ugh, did I talk about that? Okay, I did. I just kind of played back the vlog a little bit. I did talk about feeling like the baby was breech. So when that happened, <clears throat> let's see how far along it was I. 30, yeah, 35 weeks, 5 days the baby was breech. We went in for um, a sonogram that next Monday, like our third trimester one, and she, I told the sonotech, I was like up front, I told her, I was like, you know, she, she was like, how have you been feeling, blah, blah, blah. I said, really, I feel like the baby's breech. It's weird. Like, I'm having this feeling that I'm getting all my kicks down below, hardly any movement in my upper, upper abdomen, and I really feel like the baby's breech. Sure enough, boom, she's like, man, you're good. The baby is breech. I knew it like I knew in my gut that's what it was but again I'm a repeat c-section so it's not like I was super worried about it or anything plus babies turn all the time and I really wasn't that worried but the baby was breached so I was like okay that explains why I'm feeling all these sharp sudden pains down in my pelvic area and all that well a week later I was like you know what I swear this baby has flipped again because I started feeling kicks more in my upper abdomen and like my side, almost like the baby was maybe transverse a little bit, which is side lying. And so <laughs> sure enough, next time, the next appointment that I went into, uh, she was like, you know what, you're probably right. I didn't get any more sonograms, but she was like, you're probably right. I don't feel a head or feet down here. So the baby's probably a little side lying. Then that was the extent of that visit. <clears throat> Pretty much we had at that point nailed down what day we were delivering and I was measuring I, I forgot to mention this at the sonogram I was measuring 39 weeks already when I was 36 weeks 36 weeks in one day I was measuring like 39 weeks and six days or some crap so needless to say this baby is going to be huge <laughs> like my uh, last baby was eight pounds eight ounces and I delivered her at 38 weeks two days I am, <clears throat> I will be 38 weeks and four days when I deliver this baby, and I anticipate at least a nine pounder, if not bigger. So, thank goodness it's not coming from my vagina. That's all I got to say. So, because I was measuring so big, I thought for sure she was going to move up my due date from 9-11, and she didn't move up my due date. And at first she was like, no, we really can't deliver on 9-1. I wanted to deliver on 9-1 for two reasons, because <laughs> Maddie's birthday is 10-1, so I thought 9-1 would be really cool. I wanted to keep it in September, and also 9-1 is a cutoff for school when they can start kindergarten and stuff at 5. So, I thought that would be really cool to have 9-1. And at first I thought she wasn't going to let me, because... At my hospital, you have to be 39 weeks to induce electively or have a C-section electively. So I was like, There's, she's not going to let me. This isn't going to happen. Then the next time when the baby was no longer breached, this is my second appointment. So two appointments ago, one appointment ago, whatever, two weeks ago, when I was 37 weeks, she was like, you're just measuring really big. Like this kid's just getting bigger and bigger by the week. And so she was like, okay, we'll deliver on 9-1. So that's how we got our day, scheduled it, got our time, super pumped. Now in the meantime of all of this, I am literally 
dying what feels like <laughs> I'm in so much pain I've been in so much pain the last like three to four weeks my pelvis hurts my hips hurt so bad like I talk about it in the vlog all the time but to be honest you guys I have never felt pain like this like it is excruciating and it's to the point where if I have to get up in the middle of the night to go pee I almost like I will sit at the edge of my bed and bawl my eyes out because I just cannot physically walk it hurts so bad and I don't know I'm a bigger girl so I know that has a lot to do with it but I feel like my body's always been capable of holding itself up until recently I feel like it's just giving out on me like my hips and my back kill me I can't breathe I have a really hard time breathing and it's just it's miserable I've been ready for several weeks to deliver this baby and it's sad because this is probably going to be my last pregnancy and I really wanted to just enjoy it and be happy I was pregnant and I am don't get me wrong but I'm to that stage where I'm like oh I'm done which makes me sad and happy because once you get to that stage you know your baby's right around the corner because every pregnant woman gets to that stage where they're just like this baby needs to get out like you can no longer live in this area we're done vacate the premises so that leads us to my last OB appointment, which was this Monday, the day after, August 29th, which was the day after my baby shower, and just a few days before we're about to deliver. And it was a routine visit. Total, I have gained 32 pounds, which I am not proud of, because with Maddie, I gained 23 pounds, but I was also really sick with her. So I lost a lot of weight by throwing up and just the nutrients I was losing as quickly as I was putting them in. I was really sick with her. So this time I have my morning sickness or any type of sickness really has not been an ailment that I've suffered from as much. It, a little bit in the first trimester but not as much as with Maddie I was throwing up all the time. And I even got to a point in my third trimester where I was throwing up all the time so I lost like six pounds my last OB appointment because I was sick. And I had fluid galore with her. I was so, so swollen. And this time I'm swollen, like I can get my rings on, oh they actually are coming off good today, but some days by the end of the day I have a really hard time getting them off. My feet are a bit swollen, like right now they look pretty puffy, but nothing like they did with Maddie. They were like pitting edema, put your finger in and it was not going anywhere type of thing. So it was different with her, my weight gain was different, this time I feel like it's all fat. Like, everything that I've been eating has just stuck to me, like glue. And 32 pounds was what my weight gain was. So, hopefully I have a 9 plus pound kid, so I'll drop like a good 20, 25 immediately. That's what I'm hoping at least, because, oh my god, 32 pounds. We did end up buying the rest of the stuff that we needed after the baby shower. I have a baby shower haul on this channel already in my vlog series, and I filmed, like, all about my baby shower. I filmed a what's in my hospital bag. So hopefully you guys see that somewhere in conjunction with this video. That's all the baby related stuff that we have bought is like we needed a bathtub, um, we, need, we bought the Ergo 360 four position baby carrier, the one that has the infant thing in it so I'll have to talk about that. Um, and just in general those are all the things that we really bought baby related wise. I haven't bought any more clothes, any more maternity things because as I said <laughs> I plan on this being my I'm pretty sure it's my last pregnancy, so I'll probably get rid of all my maternity clothes after I'm done with this. So back to this last OB appointment, um, I mean she pretty much was just like, you're ready, we're ready to go, be at the hospital at 5 o'clock in the morning, and we're ready to go, I don't really have to prep for anything, I didn't really have to do anything, I didn't have to ask any questions because I know what to expect. Please keep in mind that I do work at the hospital that... I will be delivering at and I got a couple of questions regarding this in general um, one of it was why I wouldn't have considered a VBAC which is a vaginal birth after a c-section and mainly it was for two reasons I'd say one of course the risks are high with a VBAC it is considered high risk no matter where you're at is it high enough risk to not take the chance that's kind of up to you the percent is very very low um, to actually have, you know, a ruptured uterus or your baby dying or you dying, stuff like that. The percentage very low. However, the percent of failure, again, to deliver naturally is very, very high. So, knowing what I know, I've been in a number, a number of VBACs that have been successful and unsuccessful, and it's very, I, I struggled a lot with 
being okay and coming, I feel like I'm gonna cry, being okay and coming to terms with my body not working properly when it comes to a vaginal delivery. You know, every woman feels like that's the natural thing to do. Like, women have been doing it for centuries. Why? All of a sudden, with things, they didn't have C sections <laughs> way long ago. You know, everyone delivered vaginally. So, why is my body any different? And I delivered at 38 weeks and two days, and I still couldn't get her out at eight pounds, eight ounces. So, I couldn't imagine if I had gone to my due date. She would have been nine and a half pounds, and I wouldn't have been able to get her out. And it just, it took me a long time to really be okay with that scenario. Especially being a labor and delivery nurse where I see it day in and day out. Vaginal deliveries and how special they are and how routine a C-section is in comparison. And it, it does, it makes me sad that I couldn't have that for my family, that I wasn't able to provide that. But once I came to terms with it and once I was like, you know what, it is what it is. Like I got my baby either way and I came to that realization, I never had the desire to be back because I didn't want to go back through the hurt and the trauma and the disappointment that I felt when I could not deliver vaginally. And because the chances of delivering vaginally a second time when you were a failure to progress the first time are very, very slim. Now, if the baby had been breached and I never got a trial of labor, it's different because your body may be capable of delivering vaginally but because that baby was breached, you can't deliver vaginally. I was a failure to progress. She was head down, was not applied to the cervix, was not fitting through my pelvis, didn't even make it to 10 centimeters to try and push. That's different. My body was probably going to do that again. And if this baby's bigger, if I couldn't even get an eight pound, eight ounce baby out, what makes you think I'm gonna get a nine and a half pounder out? So that's kind of where my head was. I didn't wanna be disappointed again. I didn't wanna let anyone down especially myself I didn't even want to put myself in that situation to be disappointed and to be just have my heart broken again just to wind up back in a c-section so you know what I was just like it is what it is I'm gonna go in for my scheduled c-section be happy that I'm having another baby and move on so that was a big question that you guys were curious about that it just that's kind of where my thoughts were Feedbacks are great, <clears throat> and I've had a lot of successful ones, but a lot of the successful ones that I've had, their first, they've either delivered vaginally and then their second baby was different, breach or something, so they had to have a C-section, and then they go and deliver vaginally again. Or like I said, their first baby was breach, they didn't even get a trial of labor, so now they're trying it and their body was fine. So I just didn't want to put myself through that. And then I actually took a screenshot of another question that I wanted to answer that's a little bit more lengthy so I'm not going to touch on it <clears throat> entirely but I did want to just answer in general sunny smiles 131 in your next pregnancy vlog if you haven't already could you explain everything that takes place during a c-section for example are you given anesthesia or epidural how you feel during and after etc as a nurse does it make it easier for you knowing what happens or just as nervous as regular gals so a c-section <clears throat> you could literally youtube it and find the entire thing i probably will not be able to film during my c-section because my hospital does not permit filming they only permit still photos but i will talk about my labor and delivery experience after just like i did with maddie but essentially <clears throat> if you're coming in for a scheduled c-section most of the time the anesthesiologists give you a spinal block which is the medication in your spine that you would get it's a little bit different of a mix but essentially like an epidural an epidural stays in your back and is meant for long-term use a spinal it just numbs you for the time being and it wears off a lot quicker and nothing stays in your back you don't have a catheter or anything with medication running into it if you start off like when I started off in a vaginal what I thought was gonna be a vaginal delivery with Maddie I had an epidural I went back for a c-section with my epidural and they just gave me additional medication to numb me further for the c-section but you get that you lay back they put a catheter in your bladder they prep your belly listen for heart tones um, of the baby prep your belly to be cut on <laughs> drape you you know a lot of times honestly it's so routine the doctors talk about what they're having for breakfast or for lunch or how their kids are doing and stuff like that it happens very frequently without actually seeing a whole c-section it's very hard to describe the entire thing in a short amount of time it's definitely something you'd have to experience to even 
know what it feels like but essentially it feels like someone's tugging on you like pushing on your belly and tugging on your belly it's not painful it shouldn't be painful if they're doing everything right um, you shouldn't feel anything just pressure so like if you had your arm out and I was pushing on your arm and you're pushing back at me that's what it feels like but not as hard um, and that's about it you don't feel when they break your bag of water you don't feel the baby coming out you don't feel when they're stitching you you don't feel anything um, the anesthesia may make you a little nauseous but in my hospital the anesthesiologist sits up at your head and kind of gives you medication as you need it and stuff like that and Andres will be sitting right next to me and he has to be scrubbed out in, in a sterile gown and all that good stuff they take care of the baby in the room they still let you hold the baby my hospital does allow you to do skin to skin if you want um, I mean it's pretty basic if you like I said if you YouTube it pretty much a basic c-section is going to happen very similarly at any hospital you deliver at and after it's normal to feel shaky like depending on what kind of medication they give you um, for pain and stuff like that it's normal to feel real shaky cold out of it kind of loopy you know they don't completely knock you out it's you're awake so <laughs> unless they have to put you under general anesthesia in case of emergency or something you're normally awake and you just feel kind of out of it so it's it's definitely an experience and I will go more into it in depth how I felt this time versus last time in my labor and delivery story after I actually deliver and then as a nurse does it make it easier for you knowing what happens actually no I, ignorance is bliss and I've always said that <laughs> ignorance is bliss because I know exactly what's supposed to happen I know the procedures that they're supposed to follow I know what's happening if no one's talking I know the code words that they use in case something's wrong and it's scary knowing that if I don't hear something that I know is supposed to happen next something's wrong or if I hear them call out for a certain medication something's wrong if I hear them call out for a certain tool something's wrong so and that makes it very scary to me whereas the first time I was a nurse technically um, yeah because I had I was in the BSN program so I was a nurse and I had the knowledge but I didn't work at that hospital so I didn't know everything about a c-section that I, I, I just knew what I learned in school but I physically work at this hospital with these people that are delivering me and it makes it very nerve-wracking to me knowing everything that's supposed to happen the way it's supposed to happen what time is supposed to happen I would rather not know like honestly I wish I had had my kids before I was a labor and delivery nurse because it makes it so much more stressful for, for me just in general like I'm nervous and I hate to admit that I hate it but I'm hoping everything goes fine and it all works out okay anyway I'm gonna try and get it together because it's just because I'm so pregnant I'm so emotional so anyway that was that <laughs> let me go back to my doctor's appointment on Monday so Monday I was having a lot of like sneezy allergy symptoms my eyes were itchy by the end of Monday night my throat hurt so bad I was like oh my god I have strep throat I went to the doctor yesterday which was Tuesday and I told her I was like you have got to check me like I feel like I have strep throat I was sneezing my throat hurt I was coughing I felt like chills and achy and so she went ahead and put me on antibiotics and a cough medicine and so you can probably hear it in my voice like I am sick for sure which sucks but it's not delaying my delivery or anything and I'm already taking antibiotics so I'm hoping everything's okay by tomorrow and again the baby is transverse <laughs> we went to have a, a 40 sonogram on Monday and the baby was the head was like on this side and the feet were over here so the baby is completely side lying so at this rate it would have never come out of my vagina even if I had tried again because it's all over the place and I feel like it's running out of room because or it's ran out of room for a few weeks now because it just feels like it's rolling around instead of like punches and kicks so that's that so anyway that was my very last pregnancy update I hope you guys enjoyed it Please send your prayers and think about us tomorrow. I'm trying to keep it together, it's not working. I'm happy, don't get me wrong, I'm super happy. I'm just nervous and a little scared. So anyway, let me just show you my belly because I cannot, can, I can't keep it together. So this is what <laughs> 38 weeks and three days looks like. Like what is this? What is this? It's so huge, 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 huge. And I like don't even, you can see how big it is from the front. It's so big. And from this side 
same thing <laughs> huge like nothing fits anymore none of my shirts go over it it's just so big and like torpedo like it's all in the front so that's why a lot of people tell me they think I'm having a boy and it's just so big so anyway like I said thank you guys so much for watching I'm sorry I can't keep it together but just think about us tomorrow and I will be posting on social media later tomorrow early Friday so be on the lookout for that to see what we're having I can't wait so I hope you guys enjoyed this series and probably my last pregnancy and we'll see you in the next one